Ken, uh, congratulations on the uh, Crazy Rich Asians oh, movie. Thank you uh, so doing much. Very well. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. I'm crazy. I'm rich. I'm Asian. Now, there you are. It was um, John, director John M. Chu said it's it's more than a movie. It's a movement. So thank you everyone for making that movie a biggest hit. It's one of my well, probably the favorite thing I've ever done in my career. For, oh, that's great. Have more people of color on the screen. Have more Asian representation. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. You get to wear outfits like that, too. I mean, and yeah. I get to wear my own wardrobe. Yeah, your yeah. own, yeah. Love it. <laughs> so uh, you went back to stand-up, I understand. Yes, yes. I Actually, I just shot my uh, Netflix stand-up special like three weeks ago, and I had the best time ever. So it was so much fun. I hadn't done stand-up comedy in, in 10 years, and it was my, my return to stand-up. And I see that you, actually, I had heard through yeah. the Netflix grapevine that you had done your... That's right. Yes. I, I hadn't done it in 15 years, and I decided... What made you decide, and, and how was it for you to go back? It was, it, you probably f figured a, a similar thing, but it was initially very scary, where I, I, I started virtually from scratch. I had made like five or 10 minutes, and then over the course of eight months, I really just grinded it out. I did a lot of, like, a lot of clubs, a lot of the improv, the funny bones, and all these clubs, did casinos, dinner theaters, I don't know, backyards. I would do everything <laughs> to try to get ready for it, and by the time I shot it, I, I was, I actually was ready for it. I, I, it was one of the, one of the most fun things I've ever done in, in my career, and, and I just, I, I really, really can't wait for people to watch it. It's very autobiographical. It talks about my, my, my life from like being a, I used to be a physician and, and like being a doctor on and how it led to me doing this, so. And where did you shoot it? I shot at the Ice House in Pasadena. Oh, that's a great place. Yes, and that's yeah. where I, I first got my start doing stand-up comedy, and actually that's where my wife uh, saw me do stand-up comedy for the first time, and I really talking about my wife and her uh, battle with breast cancer. She's cancer-free and doing great. So, in many ways, I... In many ways, I dedicated my act to her, because it really is about family and, and, and yeah. love. I actually call it, I'm, the working title is Ken Jung Full Circle. So coming back full circle where, you know, where I'm, I'm doing the club that I love the most and, and with, the, uh, with the wife that I love the most. I don't know, just make more. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard, it's amazing because you're, so you're doing stand-up and someone in the audience had a seizure. Yes. And because you used to be a doctor, yeah. you actually, you're a full service comedian. You went out and <laughs> took care of the person with the seizure. Yes, and it wasn't from a bad joke. Now, it was, <laughs> it was actually, this is what really happened. In, in the beginning of my set, and even in my own Netflix special, I, I do some crowd work like an Asian Don Rickles. You know, that's kind of how I do things. I insult people as Mr. Chow, like, ha, 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 stupid. I do all these things. <laughs> and then someone in, someone in the third row was like, Mr. Chow, Mr. Chow. I was like, calm down. I'll insult you later. I'll get to you. And she was like, no, no, someone's passed out. And I literally dropped the microphone jumped off the stage and went to help the patient. It was like, it was like Godfather 3, like Michael Curley. Like, just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in, you know? <laughs> it was uh. so surreal, and yet 550 people in Phoenix, like, being quiet and helping out this one lady who actually, you know, she actually turned out she had a petite mal seizure, and she was passed out. She was unconscious. And I'm thinking to myself as a physician, I'm, I may have to do CPR. I was in doctor mode, very serious. I was like, and I did stuff with the American Heart Association teaching hands-only compression CPR. You don't have to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth anymore, and you do it to the beat of staying alive. That's a, that's a fact. 100 beats per minute. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, am I gonna have to BG this girl? I don't know. <laughs> and within minutes, like, the paramedic came and she's totally fine, seizure-free. And my whole point is, if you don't like my show, you don't have to have a freaking seizure. Yeah. <laughs> Just walk out. I got the check, yo. 